Hello everyone and welcome to another round of Tuesday Night Legacy presented by Spellhold Games. My name's Eugene and I'm here presenting the fourth video of the night from March 29th. The order of the actual rounds got a little bit screwy uh, due to some problems behind the scene, but I want to make sure that both of these guys got on camera because this is a pretty cool match. On the left, we have Steven playing a mono white painter list where he's trying to win through the grindstone painter servant combo, trying to get all of the pieces that he needs and the mono white kind of helps him get there with that. And then of course, on the right, we have Bryson playing his four color DAC pile that wins through any number of win conditions. So enough about the decks, let's get started. Let's do this. I think Steven has the play here, starting out with a Crystal Vein into the Grindstone. Grindstone, of course, being able to mill the top of the library. As long as the cards are the same color, you get to keep going. That's where Painter Servant makes things really easy by changing all of the color of the cards in the opponent's deck, or all cards, to a single color. Uh, that Crystal Vein kind of being a... Diff it easier to acquire version of a City of Traders, uh, kind of... Con like mixing that in with a Lotus Petal, you have to sacrifice it in order to make the two mana, but it can tap for a single mana. The other land that Steven has, of course, is the Urza Saga, which not only works with getting the Grindstone, but can also give him the secondary win condition of the Beats. On the right side, we see Bryson firing off just a Chain of Smog turn two. So this is usually used with his Witherbloom Apprentice to kill the opponent but uh, he's just firing it off here to get as much value as possible. I think Bryson is worried that Steven may already have the combo in his hand, so if he gets rid of two cards, then at least that'll kind of slow Steven down. Steven decides not to fire it back, because if he does, then Bryson would fire it back to him again, making him discard four cards, which is way more than Steven wants to get rid of. So we see on Steven's turn that... Uh, Ancient Tomb coming down, dealing some damage, sacrifices his Crystal Vein, which gets him a Karn the Great Creator, which lets him go and get its any artifact, yeah, outside of the game. So he went and got that Painter Servant right out of his sideboard. Now, as long as he's got one more mana, because he's going to lose this Urza Saga right now, although he can probably... Oh, he's spending the two mana to get the, the uh, Karn Struct there. And now he's looking for that zero or one converted mana cost artifact out of his deck. Yeah, getting that Lotus Petal, getting some um, mana generation here. Maybe for the next turn. Can't quite activate that Grindstone yet. Bryson not really doing anything else. Looks like he's got an Assassin's Trophy. Not entirely certain what else is in his hand. Probably at least a little bit of uh, Denial. So two mana. Two mana is going to get down an Oswald Fiddlebender. Oh, here's the Painter Servant. In case you guys wanted to read it, it's going to come down, I think, in a turn or so here. So, the Fiddlebender, uh, you get to sacrifice an artifact. It's basically a birthing pod for artifacts. One of the newer cards came out of the Dungeons & Dragons set. Kind of a, a cool extra card to get out of this deck because you can kind of sacrifice those artifacts that you don't really need to get into the combo pieces. That Karnstruck sitting on two. Bryson paying two mana here. I think this is at the end of Steven's turn. He's already fetched his land. I think he's going to fire off this Assassin's Trophy, and he's trying to decide where it's going to go. Do I take care of the combo piece, or do I take care of this Karn, or do I take care of this Urza Saga? Because that's just going to generate way more value than I'm willing to deal with. Steven goes and gets a basic, basic planes. And we're going to see an expressive iteration from Bryson. Gotta generate that card advantage. Exiling the land, get that straight into play. Keep uh, as much information a secret as possible. He's got a couple of those birds, the Baleful Strix. Okay, he's going to go ahead and fetch up. The Strix mana, getting a Bayou. And uh, just just playing down. Yeah. Playing down here, getting that 1-1 one, one Death Touch. Good to stop attacks, but it won't stop the Painter's Servant. 
So almost positive that Bryson has to have something that's going to stop this Painter Servant. We see two mana for the Painter Servant to come down. Basically, the combo's online. He's got three mana, two and the pedal. And that's going to turn every card in Bryson's deck black. He activates the Grindstone, which is going to mill out his whole library. So when it goes to Bryson's turn, he tries to draw a card. State-based action says you lose the game. So here we are in game two. Here's the Assassin's Trophy. We're going to start with a Retrofitter Foundry for Steven. So basically Steven's backup plan here is if he can't combo, then he's going to try and deal as much damage as possible, uh, winning just through beats either with Servos or Thopters or Constructs or Karnstructs. The Retrofitter Foundry, of course, working very well with the Urza Saga. A lot of decks nowadays are just kind of throwing in that package. It doesn't require a ton of extra um, slots in the deck. As long as your deck doesn't mind the colorless mana, you can basically just put in four Urza Saga and a Retrofitter Foundry, and it only takes up one non-land slot. See a lot of Shadow Spears as well, depending on how deep you want to go with the Urza Saga um, package. That Wither Bloom Apprentice was going to be a really good card at uh, ending the game as the Chain of Smog combos with this. You just continue to target yourself and it drains your opponent for one uh, life every time that you target yourself. And you can target yourself as many times as you want. So immediately ends the game. So Steven was wise to get rid of this Witherbloom Apprentice as soon as possible. See a fetch for Bryson. Gonna pay two mana. Three mana, sounds like Dak Faden. Dak Faden, one of Bryson's personal favorite Planeswalkers. He's going to be able to steal that artifact, which is extremely strong against a artifact-based deck, especially one that needs specific combo pieces. Uh, didn't want to take the uh, Shadow Spear there, so he decided to take the, the combo engine, or at least the, the value engine of Retrofitter Foundry instead. We do see Rest in Peace come down, though. This is a pretty strong card against Bryson's deck. He likes to use his graveyard quite a bit, um, but I, I think this is actually another main board piece, even though we are in game two for uh, Steven, because he also has the Helm of Obedience combo in his deck, using the Karn the Great Creator to go and get one of the Helms, and with no cards in the graveyard or the, that replacement effect, it actually mills out your opponent very similar to how the Grindstone Painter Servant mills out your opponent. See one damage come across the board. The second Wither Bloom down. Deck going up to two. Getting a lot of uh, card selection there. All right, Steven tapping two. Going to get an Ingenious, Ingenious Smith. This is also a newer card from the Dungeons and Dragons set. It basically is pay two, look at the top four. You can get an artifact from it. Unfortunately, Steven does whiff here. But every time that he plays, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. It only gets to do it once each turn, so you can't go absolutely insane with it. But uh, having that advantage of getting an artifact off the top plus a beater sometimes, maybe in the long game, is a pretty good deal. Uh, that artifact that Steven put down was the Soul Guide Lantern, kind of a, that might have been a sideboard tech as it doesn't continue to exile the graveyard, but uh, at least it can generate him some advantage if he ever wants to sacrifice it since Rest in Peace is already doing the graveyard job. We see Bryson drawing cards here, played that expressive iteration, checking his mana, played a Brainstorm, more mana. It's got two mana left. Don't know. Might have the Chain of Smog in hand. Steven's tapped out here. Can't really do anything. So, yep, there's the Chain of Smog. And that's going to be the game. Targets himself. <laughs> Bryson shows the hand. Shows that he had two Force of Wills and two extra blue cards there. So there was no way that wasn't resolving. Or it wasn't ending the game right then and there. All right, here in game three, we see a Lotus Petal Crystal Vein come down. Uh, turn one, Ether Sworn Candidus. So... This is going to shut down at least the cantripping of Bryson. He can't cast more than one non-artifact spell each turn. Uh, it is not going to stop the Chain of Smog, as that is not a uh, cast. That is actually a copy. But 
I think it is also a main board tech for Steven. I'm not entirely certain. I haven't looked at the list. We see the uh, Ether Sworn Cannon is coming across for two. The Grindstone already in play. But Steven on one land. Hasn't played a land since the first turn. Throwing down a Pithing Needle. Gonna name Dak Faden. Really nice of these guys to write down the card. We're hoping to get a better camera in the near future here so that everything's not just completely washed out. Depending on when the fluorescent hits that name, you can kind of see it sometimes. But I do appreciate these guys. I, I had asked them to write down things like this, so it was really, really nice of them. We see Ether Sworn Cannon is coming in for beats. Passing it back to Bryson. He's going to... Oh, Bryson also not having any lands. He's discarded two Uros so far. Never know if an Ether Sworn Cannonist is just going to get in there. Oh, did draw the third land. The third Uro! No lands, though, so no Explorer for Bryson. At least he gained that three life back. Kind of negating this Ether Sworn Cannonist beats... He's got two for an expressive. Got to dig deeper, find that mana. Seeing Dak Faden, not sure he's super helpful here, although he could steal the Canonist or even the Grindstone. Oh, <laughs> decided that he was actually going to keep the Punishing Fire in hand and discard it down to hand size. Punishing Fire, of course, he can return it to his hand uh, as long as Steven has gained life for the turn which he can do so by tapping that Grove of the Burn Willows. We see Steven finally draw a mana, and he tries to go deep for his Karn the Great Creator, but Bryson did have that Force of Will ready for it. And that was the only spell he had to play that turn, so no dice. We see a Baleful Strix come down. That is an artifact spell. Bryson had a Brainstorm. He could have cast it, but I guess he didn't need it. All right, we see the Painter Servant come down. Now we're in danger territory for Bryson. He's going to say, absolutely no way. <laughs> Exiling the fourth Uro, seeing all four Uros for the game. That is a lot of Uro action. Steven kind of questioning whether uh, Bryson could bring back the Punishing Fire, but Bryson points out that that's actually an activated... Well, it's a triggered ability of the card that becomes an activated ability. I'm not sure. It's when they gain life, you may pay. So I think it's a triggered ability that requires mana. And so it was not a spell, so Aether Sworn's Canonist does not stop it. See a Brainstorm on main phase. Putting two back. I think Bryson was hoping to hit a fetch land here. I'm not sure. He did indeed. There's a Verdant Catacombs, but he passes it back. Keeping up the Baleful Strix to stop those Canonist Beats. Already down to nine. Steven paying that life to get that Servo. Greatness at any cost. At the end of Steven's turn, he casts the Punishing Fire to finally get rid of that Canonist. So Bryson is free to cast as many spells as he wants. Plague Engineer coming down, naming Servo. <laughs> Steven making the, the little label for us. So Plague Engineer basically completely shutting down the usefulness of the Retrofitter Foundry at this point. As if you can't make Servos, then you can't turn Servos into Thopters. So without the Thopters, can't make those Constructs. Not really... A useful card anymore. Things kind of turning around for Bryson here. Steven's still just on one mana. He's drawn two mana this whole game and no white mana. He's showing us his hand full of white spells. Just a, a disappointment. A betrayal of the deck. Mana screw. I'm sure no matter what format of magic you play, every magic player is Familiar with the concept of Mana Screw. A lot of damage coming through now. With the Uro, the Plague Engineer, and the Strix. That's going to be 9. And then we're going to see a Wither Bloom come down. Steven throwing down a... Uh, um, a Graft Digger's Cage. And shows us 
his whole hand. He's got that helm, but not going to happen. So that is the end of our round four. Thanks for joining us for that game. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I really liked seeing that mono white painter list on the table. It was pretty cool. It was just a little unfortunate for the mana screw at the end there. Um, we are going to have our big Super FNM tournament tomorrow as of uh, April 8th. And uh, it's a little bit of backlog of content for me personally, but I'm going to try and get out all of these videos as, as quick as I can. Uh, but please enjoy what we have and please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you around. Thanks.